Jonathan, how are we doing? Sean here, Metal Mercenaries. That was a Yorkshire greeting there. Back in the armchair. Been away for uh, a week or so. Down the south coast visiting family. So uh, I thought it was time for another ramble. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is some sad news that we had recently. Uh, it was the uh, loss of uh, a great friend of mine, a chap I knew pretty well, Duncan McFarlane. Knew Duncan right from the 90s um, and the days when he started World Games Illustrated. Uh, and I have to say, a lovely, lovely man. I remember going to the uh, War Games Holiday Centre with uh, a lot of uh, big names at the time, playing Gettysburg, uh, facing off against Duncan, uh, who was up on Seminary Ridge, and his grand batteries firing down on us and breaking up our pickets charge. Um, but uh, the great thing about Duncan, he was an unassuming chap, quiet chap, nice chap to be around. Um, and uh, he was great for um, smaller companies and hobby as well because uh, when Royal Games Illustrated was well going and uh, was doing doing its great service uh, to us all for the hobby um, he would look after the smaller companies as well he knew that our advertising was the mainstay of everything and um, Duncan would try and help as much as he possibly could to make sure that us smaller companies got our adverts in there were, were able to afford the adverts that we put forward and were able to keep going and uh, I have to say a great thank you to him for that I said it to him at the time but unfortunately he's not with us anymore um, I also remember Duncan from the shows uh, going for drinks with him at times sitting and chatting long and hard about different things in the hobby with himself and Dave Thomas uh, Smithy um, and also uh, Year in, year out, I've always gone with my friend John Martin to the Beer and Pretzel show where we've always put a game on. And I remember, without fail, Duncan would turn up to those shows. Um, he would come purely from Newark on the train to get involved. Uh, he'd sit and game with us because uh, there was an awful lot of board games and things like that at that show. But he'd come and game with me and John and what a laugh we would have. And I can even remember... Um, when he started with his Trent miniatures out for West Indies um, and the Napoleonic period and um, me and John had uh, put together a collection um, of the West Indies small one way back when first Colbert brought out some uh, round hatted Napoleonics so as soon as we saw those we revamped the figures we had and um, spoke to Duncan and uh, Duncan said if we were doing a game he gave us a discount towards all the figures that we got which was fantastic he no need to do it but he did uh, we got lots of figures and I have to say a beautiful collection that uh, John has in his uh, in his back room at the moment um, it's a great collection uh, with all the variety of troops for the West Indies French British slaves Spanish um, but most of the great stuff obviously that we added in from Trent Miniatures um, and we did do the games and fortunately enough uh, when we put a ga the game on one time at Beer and Pretzels we were lucky enough to have Duncan there and he loved it, he played with us uh, the attack on the uh, slave compound and the, the plantation and uh, one happy chap so uh, that's my memory of, uh, of the great man. Um, I just thought it would be nice to say some things about him. Um, we all know the legend of the magazine that was, but a nice, really, really nice chap as well. Okay, um, other things I want to talk about. I say I went down south to, um, just um, recently and um, I was fortunate enough to visit uh, a couple of our YouTube well-knowns or well-knowns as I see them um, uh, fortunately as well I uh, had the chance to sit for a few hours with these guys and uh, chat with them 
and I have to say I have a thoroughly enjoying time. That was uh, Fraser from Ketteringham. Uh, visited the uh, the man cave, his battle room, and I have to say, well, first of all, what a fantastic chap Fraser is. He's a lovely, lovely bloke. Um, I've been a hobby an awful long time, but I have to say, both of these chaps, Fraser, definitely one of them, is, is uh, watching his videos to start with and then getting to know the chap. is so infused with the hobby and, and has helped to reinfuse my uh, love for the hobby as well. So thanks for that, Fraser. But the war room and seeing his figures firsthand that we usually see on the screen and actually being able to pick them up and look at them, I have to say, guys, <laughs> As I said in a, in a thing I put on Facebook, um, they're twice as good as what they look on screen. You can't quite show uh, on screen. You don't see the, the, that level that goes in. And uh, I've been painting many, many figures over my over the years. I have to say, beautiful, beautiful collections he's got there. He's so neat and crisp with what he does. And what I love about Fraser as well is he sets his stall out for a project and he does that project. He gets on, he finishes it. If you were to go to Fraser's yourself and see, there isn't a stash like the rest of us have. I have a room here absolutely full of figures everywhere from my years. But Fraser, he decides, he gets it, he sorts it, and he does it. And we're fortunate, all of us, aren't we, that we get to see it. Well, I was fortunate to see it uh, in the flesh, so to speak. The uh, next chap I got to meet for a few hours for a chat was uh, a well-known from the Plastic Crack podcast, uh, Martin uh, Seven Sun, as he's known. Um, his love for uh, all things War of the Roses and Napoleonic, and now I believe ECW, the way things are going, uh, is renowned and again an inspiration for a person like me. Uh, if I needed reinfusing, Martin's definitely been one of those with the other three guys, Ken, Steve, and Dom. Now, when you meet him, he's just as enthusiastic about the hobby. Uh, as anyone who knows me knows, I can talk. But uh, when I was with Martin, Martin, Martin put me in my place. When he when he's enthused about something he wants to talk about, he can talk, and I was so happy to meet the chap. It was really really nice. And so again, thank you to both of those. Fraser and Martin for uh, highlighting my holiday as well for me, really giving me two great new experiences. Um, another thing I might want to talk about is uh, something that Fraser mentioned in one of his videos and something that I, I, that's up for the guys, and it's teddy bears. As some of you probably know, I was around right at the beginning of first call. And um, when we used to go to the shows back in the day, one of the things we developed to uh, put forward for people is what we call the ones for the War Games Widows. And Rob Baker, a fantastic designer who was with me at First Court, uh, made these lovely teddy bears and historical teddy bears. And the first one he made was what we call Billy Bear, which unfortunately I don't have anymore, or I have one in the house. And it was an American Civil War teddy bear that he started with. And I don't know if people remember the old days of First Corps, but our sign on our First Corps badges was a teddy bear's head with a kepi on. Civil War being the first major range as well that First Corps put out. Um, and they uh, continued in that ilk when we were building them to sell at the shows for the chaps to take home for what we call the War Game Widows. And um, the teddy bears that we did were four more that we added to to the thing and that's the four that I, I've got and um, I'll just see if I can hold them up we have this lovely chap here and we'll just get him into the middle there and touch the screen so he maybe comes into focus that was Bernapart Edward of the Guard. We had Bersingeterix, which was our Celt, and Teddy Asparius. These are the four teddy bears. The whole idea with these chaps was that when you came to a war game show, 
you always end up leaving that poor lovely lady at home or your girlfriend or whoever it may be and we thought wouldn't it be nice if you could buy yourself one of these to take home start to build the collection and she gets something out of it in the end and especially at that time cherished cheddies were such a massive thing I still have a mass of these, uh, well I say a mass, I have a few, quite a few of these things and uh, what I've decided to do guys, uh, as this seems to be a nice idea is, I'm in my 400s and some things building up um, for my subscriptions and I thought what, I'd get, what I'll do when I get to 500 is um, I'll do a little bit of a, a, a subscription giveaway and I'll maybe use some of the teddy bears. I just think they were uh, a nice touch and uh, maybe it's time to bring them back. Hey, let people uh, out there nowadays get their hands on some of the little teddy bears. Okay, um, one other thing I thought I'd mention, and it's just me being retro and being all reminiscent of as I've been a little bit, is uh, I found these kind of things. And I have to say, And Teddy come to join us. Yes, um, these things, um, El Cid. It was bigger than these. You had a lot more transfers in them, but I thought they were fantastic back in the day. And being historically minded, military history minded, and into my war game figures as I was at the time, I can remember thinking, wow, these are fantastic. And you put the transfers on wherever you wanted, and you made up the battle scenes yourself. And then I noticed these when I was at Battle Abbey. This one especially, the castle attack, because it's uh, like a Norman-esque attack of the castle. And I saw it, because um, I go in there and I, I look at the helmets they have in there and a lot of the medieval equipment and things. And I thought, wow, that reminds me of when I was a kid. Um, and I, I remember they did that one, they did Custer's Last Stand, I believe they did the Viking ones. So when I got home with this, me being me, I thought, I wonder if they do any more. So I looked at the name on it and what they called, uh, they called them rub downs. So I went on eBay, rub down, to look at these rub down things. And they're very cheap and they do an awful lot of them as well. So that was the attack on the castle. They do knights in tournament, fantastic artwork in them. They do trench warfare, which was a brand new one for me. They do have the Viking attack and they even have D-Day beach attack. So if you fancy something a little bit different, if you go on eBay and look down, rub down transfers and uh, I just think it's a great thing for those kind of games that we play. It gives you rough ideas, um, shows you different things you can do and if nothing else, even if you were to photograph them and get them printed out bigger, they make great backdrops. For some of the lovely scenes that we tend to try and make so there you go guys um it was a quick ramble from me on this one not a very long one um i just wanted to say a little bit about duncan and thanks to him and i just wanted to say thanks to fraser and to martin for putting up with me for a few hours and uh, a little bit about the teddy bears and help me get over that 500 and you might even be able to win some okay thanks see you again somewhere Bye.